I'm Jonathan. And I'm Jennifer. And you're watching A Well-Traveled well Life. Where we will do cool projects around the house. And travel the world. Here's to the journey. The Cherbourg Port is not directly in the town of Cherbourg, but a lot of times what you're going to Cherbourg for may not be the city. We would recommend if you have a chance to at least drive around the city. They've done quite a bit of revitalization and it's a city definitely worth going to. Has a really beautiful town hall, a circle that is full of lovely architecture and has a lively vibe to it. So it's worth getting into Cherbourg, although most people are there for the various excursions. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the excursions that you might go to. As you exit the ship, you are going to be exiting right through a museum. So you'll come off the ship, you'll go down a long hall, and then you'll have to kind of wind around, go down some stairs. There is an elevator lift if you need that. And there are restrooms in that building. So that port building, once you exit there, there will be a large building on your right. You'll have to walk down that to get into the city. It's about a half mile or mm, a 15 to 20 minute walk to get into the city of Cherbourg. That building on your right is the Cité de la Mer. That is a museum, a visual icon, so you'll know where you are trying to get back to when you're going, when you're walking back to the port. Most folks while they're in Cherbourg are doing one of a few different excursions and there are enough excursions from Cherbourg to keep you busy for two or three days. Probably the most popular thing for most visitors to do because you're in Normandy, you are close to the D-Day beaches and the D-Day museums. So Marais de saint alice is a small town that was known because of the parachuters that came in, uh, got hung up on the church and were cut down later by some real heroes. It's a charming little village. There's a touristy feel to it because of the museums and, and that sort of thing, but it is a beautiful village to visit and more importantly has great history. Also, you can get out to Utah Beach, Omaha Beach, and all of the D-Day beaches. Omaha Beach is the beach you probably need to go to. Your experience there will really depend upon the tides. If you are there at high tide, the water comes all the way up to the seawall. You will be able to see a really, really beautiful monument out in the water, but it doesn't give you the true feel of what those soldiers who landed on the beach that day experienced. If you go at low tide, you will see how far out that that water is, and it will give you a much better understanding of the amount of land those troops had to cross in order to get to the cliffs above the beach. Seeing it, you have a clear understanding of the experience that they went through. You'll see that those cliffs are immediately above the beach, knowing that the Germans were there waiting for them, how open the beaches are, and there was just nothing to protect them between their landing spot and where they needed to get to, to engage in the fight. It is a two hour drive out to Omaha Beach. Once there, you'll see the monument, you'll be able to walk the beaches, walk the seawall, and from there, it's a it's another quick drive to the American Cemetery. The American Cemetery is absolutely worth going to. You can't get up close to the headstones, but there is a walkway that goes all the way around and through the cemetery in a large monument with a really fabulous statue to the spirit of youth, as well as maps that show the invasion, how the mission was accomplished, and then there's a wall featuring the names of all of the soldiers who were never found. So they aren't buried there, they just were never found. There is a museum at the American Cemetery that is 
worth walking through and it will it is actually the entrance to the cemetery so you walk through that first the museum features articles from the invasion as well as stories about individuals who were caught in the face of this war i don't think anybody goes through the either the museum or the cemetery without being transformed by the emotional experience that it is the the number of lives lost is profound it seems like no war should happen without considering the the memorial that will follow in its wake the size the scope and the number of lives lost and the stories cut short Another excursion from Cherbourg is, and, and in the same area as the D-Day beaches, is the town of Bayou. Bayou is about a 90-minute drive from the city of Cherbourg. It is known for its tapestry, and this is a actual embroidery as opposed to a tapestry. It's an embroidered piece of linen that tells the story of the history of the Norman invasion. So it's quite old. It is long. It's not very wide, but it's long. And because of its age, it's behind glass and worth seeing. Val de Serre is a 45 minute drive to a little medieval fishing village that would be a different excursion and certainly one worth doing. If you're looking more for quaint and charming France, the Normandy culture is all about fishing. It's rural. So there are lots of countryside villages and seaside villages whose predominant economic drivers are, are working. They're, they're fishing and farming. There is a chance to go see Mont Saint-Michel from Cherbourg. It is a three hour drive. I would suggest that probably the best way to do that is a shore excursion through your ship. There are ways to do it using a taxi or uh, even a train, but you're taking risks and you're probably better off doing that with a shore excursion. Remember that Saint Mount Saint-Michel is on a hill so there's a walk up to the monastery and then once you get to the bottom of the monastery you have 400 or more steps to get up to the entrance to the monastery so that really is an excursion that requires mobility and the physical fitness to be able to make the walk and then do the stairs. Because of the three hour drive there and the three hour drive back, the excursion doesn't provide for a lot of time at the monastery. So there's a village at the bottom that's worth walking around, but you're not gonna have a lot of time to do that as well as walk up to the monastery and then walk the stairs of the monastery. So keep time in mind on that one. But if that's on your bucket list, the Cherbourg is a port from which you can do that. Whatever you do in the Cotendin, which is that arm of France that sticks out into the sea, I know you'll find great food, beautiful sights, lovely villages, lots of history, and excellent caramels and fudges, and some really good people. Enjoy your visit to the port of Cherbourg.